Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Game House Collective, and I'm here to give my early impressions based on The Last of Us. Now, I've been playing The Last of Us for about 12 hours so far, picked it up. I managed to get it delivered on Thursday by a stroke of luck, so I did get it ahead of the release day. That was quite pretty. Thank you very much, Shop2.net, for your guaranteed by the release day policy. That was marvellous. Okay, I haven't played the multiplayer. I have played through the campaign. So I'm going to give my impressions based on that exclusively, so I haven't touched the multiplayer at all. Okay, so first off, story-wise, I really liked the story. It was a strong story. It was a very powerful story. It had a lot of nuance and it had moments of humour and it had moments of dread and horror and heartache. And I think it was a very good, well-rounded story. Being, uh, It's good to see the, the protagonist, Joel, uh, although it, and it really was. It, people say it's a story, it's any story. I'd say it really was, again, Joel's story of him, his 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 being broken as a younger man, and then it flashes forward 20 years later. It starts off with the tutorial level starts. The tutorial goes on for a very long time, but the tutorial level starts off and it's in the present day, and there's a, a fungal infection that turns people into crazy rage-filled zombie types, and that turns people into crazy screaming violent nut jobs. So you see that moment, you see then you see the moment where his world gets the world gets destroyed and his life gets destroyed, his reason for living gets destroyed. Flashes forward 20 years later, and he is this grizzled, jaded man who's done some incredibly unpleasant things to to get by. And he meet and he ends up becoming the charge of this girl. Ellie becomes beholden on him and he ends up he would support her getting her out. And it shows him being very authoritarian, very very loveless. You can see that he's lost that kind of spark in his life and through their interplay you see him start to uh, grow in his affection for this young girl and take on this sort of fatherly duties. And the the storyline is, is absolutely fantastic but I'm not going to give any spoilers out about it other than fungal zombie apocalypse. Man finds his charge to protect a young girl. That's it. That's as far as I'm going to tell you with the story. Right, graphics wise. Graphically it looks beautiful. It really does. The uh, It really does push this generation's capability of graphics. It's quite, for a console game, it is quite spectacularly beautiful. Uh, however, I do have a few qualms that the, the, the stability of the engine is slightly questionable. Uh, in moments where you have multiple enemies, if you're melee attacking multiple enemies, say I had a case where I was melee attacking two enemies on a metal staircase outside a building, and all of a sudden... The, the Myself and the character I was fighting with just glitched out of the map entirely for about a split second and then came back in again. Now, none of these were game-crashing glitches, but you do get some fairly, in some cases, some very substantially flashy, instantaneous, and then instantly rectified glitches. So, there are a few issues with the graphics, but it looks beautiful. It really does. Sound-wise, the sound design, again, is very, very strong. I did discover at least one sound glitch... But generally, the voice acting, the sound design, and everything is very atmospheric. It's very in keeping, down to the way that Ellie, your, your AI uh, partner, you're walking around. She might start whistling, or she'll come up across a. There's one interesting moment where she comes across a um, a poster of a of a model, and she said, "I thought you had a, I thought you had food in your time." I said, uh, and, and Joel says, "Yeah, we do. Just some people didn't eat much of it." And then she was like, "Why?" And then they went, "Because of the way they looked." And she just went. Well, that's stupid, and just wanders off. And it's, there's lots of little kind of hints and criticisms, and a few a few minor little critiques on the modern world and things like that through the eyes of this girl who was born seven years after this zombie apocalypse. So all she knows is this broken down world. And Joel, of course, was already a, a young adult man um, when this all happened. So he kind of grew. He kind of grew to. Ad oh, it's just a true adulthood and middle age in this area. He he adapted to the world, and she's a product of it. So it was interesting to see that. It's interesting to see you know see her her wow her being wowed by things like hotels and going wow. Imagine what this was like when it wasn't this horrible dilapidated dump. But anyway, that that was just that's nice the way that sound design works. The one glitch I found that was quite funny. Uh, you're outside. It's chucking you down with rain. You go inside. You can hear the rain hammering off the roof. And I went right to the back corner of a room and all of a sudden the sound glitched and it thought I was outside again. So the sound got really loud, then I moved a bit and it went off. Went back again really loud, so that was a, a minor, this is a real minor tetchy, tetchy criticism. Generally sound, fantastic. As with the graphics, a uh, couple of glitches, but fantastic. Right, gameplay. Now gameplay is set up into a few different sections. You have your walking and talking sections. 
you have your platforming kind of you have sort of a few puzzle platforming kind of areas where you need to get from, get over somewhere and you need to find a, a ladder or you need to get someone across and there's a little bit of that uh, then you've got your you've got your all out combat there are moments where it's just survive some cases it's kill everything some cases it's survive for so long until you can get through a door um, so there's those moments and that's generally against infected enemies you have various different types of infected enemies, uh, which again I won't go into because they, they get introduced during the game. I'll tell you the main two, there's a few others get introduced through. You've got your main, your, your, your runners, and they're just sort of infected, they're, they're kind of in, infected humans. Again, they're all humans, but they're kind of sort of twitching and screaming, and you can see that they're they're being taken, their brains are being broken down by this fungus. It's quite interesting, and they're kind of like moaning and screaming and twitching, and, and that's kind of interesting. And when they see you, they just scream and start flailing for you. And then the other main enemy type you get are the clickers. These are blind, and their whole head is this disgusting uh, fungal growth with teeth. And they only, they can see using sound, so they use... Um, they use their, their they use clicks like sonar. There was a guy in the news who did it recently, a blind guy who get himself around by making clicking noises and then counting how long it takes for the reverberation. And then he used that to get himself around. So that's where they've used that from. And they they have switched it up nicely so that you can you can either shoot, stab, or melee your, your standard infected to death. Whereas your clickers, they are one shot kills. So you can shoot them, but they take a fair couple of shots. And when they see you, they go for you. Or you can create single or, or multiple use shivs. You can upgrade how, how well these shivs last. And you can get a pair of scissors and some sellotape and you can grab it and you can stab them in the neck and kill them. And those are, to begin with, single use weapons. So they have that kind of interesting way of doing it. So that's kind of fun. So then you have, so you've got to say, you've got your open survival combat. You've got your uh, stealth, kind of a stealth predator and a stealth survival mode depending on how you look at it. You have sort of stealth modes where you're in a big area, it's either full of human, non-infected or infected, and you've got to get from one place to another. In some cases you have to kill everybody, in some cases you can just, you can sneak through. And it's one of those things, it, the longer you go uh, stealth knocking people out, you can choke them out, knock them out, you know, hide, take their, try and hide their bodies away. Once you've dropped them, there's no picking them up, but you can grab them and drag them to where you want them and choke them out or shoot them in the head. So there's those kind of moments, uh, and it's interesting because you know, the, 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 it's a lot of it is essentially a survival stealth game with shooting action elements. I think it really tries to funnel you down the stealth route, and that's where a lot of the tension in the game comes. And I enjoy it. I and mean, there are some moments, of course, where it isn't. It's it's a case of kill or be killed. You're locked in an area. You've got X number infected or X number of people. Kill them to progress. Um, so you've got a nice variance, but it's obvious what the game wants you to do. So uh, there's no real freedom here. Uh, it is a very linear game and you know what what's coming up because if you walk into an area and you find bottles and bricks everywhere, you know it's meant to be a stealth area. That's like, okay, right, I stealth from here to here. I can throw, you can throw bottles of distractions. You can throw them at people to stun them. Um, all that, it's all very good gameplay in of itself. Um, the crafting mechanism is really good. What you have is you have you pick up different ingredients and you can craft stuff and you craft it in real time. So you bring up your crafting menu, the game still goes on, you pick what you want to make, you hold down the button, hold down X, takes a few seconds to create it and in some cases it takes a few seconds to use. So for example with a health pack, your health doesn't regenerate. So in some cases you might need to find somewhere, run away, hide behind a table, create a health pack, use a health pack, that can take up to about 10 seconds. So there's a real moment of tension and you can see the character kind of is bandaging himself up that is really nice and that keeps that kind of tense immersion so that's really enjoyable i did enjoy that i did enjoy the brutality of it there's moments where you smash people's heads and especially the infected they you burst their heads and you do it with people as well it's really brutal there's moments where the close combat with joel he will just start smashing people's heads into piles of bricks and things it's very visceral and very brutal however i do have a few qualms with the melee combat as brutal and as much as i have enjoyed it it is very simplistic. It's literally just square to melee. And you can literally just mindlessly bash square. And especially with the normal infected, with, un, with, with, with uh, certainly if you've got human, uninfected, without guns, 
or you've got just the scream, the shouting, sort of the running infected without uh, no clickers or anything. You can literally just sit there and just bash square. On normal, I found that I could sit there, I could make myself out in the open and have loads of running infected towards me, and I could just bash square, and they all are dead in a few seconds. And that was on normal, and I walked out of it with minimal damage, and I smashed all of their heads off things. I'm like, well, that that was a little disappointing for me. Uh, the shooting. I enjoyed the shooting. That was really well done. It was that nice, like the, the bow and arrow. I didn't like the fact that it was... It, you didn't really have a draw thing. You had a thing where you, you brought up the bow and it automatically drew. And then it, you got your bead on your... Um, bead on who you want to shoot at and then you fire to shoot. You didn't have the feeling that you did with, with Tomb Raider where you were drawing back the bow, which I really enjoyed. I would have liked to have seen a mechanic more like that in Tomb Raider. Uh, more like the one in Tomb Raider in The Last of Us. But in general, I found it enjoyable. I like the fact that the, all the all the ammo was very scarce, so you had to be very cautious as to when you were going to openly engage. Unless, as I said, you can just spam the melee combat, which meant to me I ended up with a great deal of ammunition. For the most part, I meleeed everybody. I either grabbed them or choked them out, or I smashed their heads off stuff and killed them. But that said, enjoyable. However, there are some issues with the gameplay, and that comes with the AI. Mostly it's the AI that's the problem. If there's a real problem I'm going to have with this game, it is the AI. I don't know why people gave this game a 10 out of 10 when the AI has this particularly bad issue. When you're with one or more, you know, one or more people, normally you're very rarely on your own. You've normally got two people, sometimes you have three. Especially during the stealth areas where you have your clickers and it's meant to be very dark and very, you know, you've got to be, you're sitting there and you're, you're terrified because if they see you, it's one hit kill and that's it game over so you need to either sneak around them or distract them stab them in the neck whatever and of course you've got to see how much you know how many shivs you've got how many health packs whether you go and get some bricks and bottles and distract them so and that's all really tense and good until you find the first time your ai partner just runs out loudly clod up like loud feet right in front of these blind killing machines and they don't react to it and I thought, oh. Because at first I thought, oh my god, it's going to go bad. And nothing happened. I'm like, oh. Well, that's even worse. That the AI just blunders out in the middle during this stealth section and nobody sees them. That happens quite a lot. And when there's only, even when there's only two of you and you're in combat mode or in stealth mode, you find that Ellie, unlike, say, in Bioshock with Elizabeth, you find that she's almost always where you don't want her to be. She's, they're very rarely in danger of being killed, but a lot of the time you want to go over here and you find they're in your way and then they jostle, and you jostle with them for a second and then they go out into the open. But for the most part, the enemy AI doesn't detect them when that happens. So it's almost doubly confusing that there's the AI glitch, but it's almost like they knew it happened and then they went, you know what, we'll just we'll take out the AI that they doesn't recognise your companions in those moments. It's almost like they rather than fix the AI, they just they just removed the ability of the enemies to detect your characters, your your AI partners. I don't know, but that, that is a real immersion killer, and for me, that is my major criticism. If you really want to play this game, you will, I found I really enjoyed it. However, if something like that is a big problem to you, and I know it is for some, you're going to hate this game. You're going to absolutely hate it. Now, I managed to enjoy it. I did enjoy it, but I am painfully aware of these AI issues. So... I'm not going to give a recommendation really on this. On the grounds that I did enjoy it, I liked it. I'm not sure why it's getting a ten out of ten. It does have its faults. Uh, I'd have accept. I'd have said, you know, if you gave it an eight, I'd say a solid eight. Nine, arguable. Ten, no way. There, there are some fundamental flaws with this game. With a game of this magnitude, with a game of this profile, with a game of this kind of budget, issues like massive AI problems aren't what you should come to expect from the level of investment they're making, the level of investment you're making in purchasing the product. But that said, I've really enjoyed it. Now, a few other bits to remind you of. There, there is an online pass. Now, this, if anything, just goes to remind everybody that Sony had no intention of saying, yes, we're going to fully support used games and not have online passes for our first-party products. We're going we're gonna to be putting the gamer first. Now, this is their last, pretty much last first party um, published title and it has a season pass, has an online pass, has an online pass. 
It also has a season pass DLC wise, there will be a single pa uh, player expansion and there will also be two multiplayer expansions. Anyway guys, uh, I hope that gives you enough information for those of you on the fence about this game to make your decision one way or the other, maybe give you a bit of information that you're not going to get from some of these mainstream reviews because they seem to gloss over some of these points or they downplay them as not important. So, make your informed decision. Either way, I hope you, hope you if you do purchase it, which I personally really enjoyed it, that you do enjoy it too. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. Catch you guys later.